Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back again. We're here for game number three. It's Veggie Esports Club going up against Wheel Wreck for sure. And guess what we got? Bam! Boom shakalaka. The draft already done because you know what? You don't want to hear me talk about that. You want your own opinions, your own thoughts, your own feelings, indeed, about what it is that they should be taking. And, well, guess what? We do have a Meepo in this game, which kind of changes the, the things around a little bit. Uh, taking back on the in-game audio. You can see that Wheel deciding to go for the last pick Meepo. Not necessarily what I think everybody was expecting. Uh, in the meantime, Franz is going to set out here and drop down a couple of early wards. Uh, interestingly enough as well, we do have the... Is this for realsy? Did we do it? Oh, no. I thought that it was the... I thought that it was a, a Blitz Storm. But it's actually going to be My, a CC and C Storm you. Spirit. Um, and this should be a good one. I'm, I'm very interested to see how this match goes. Like, Meepo versus Storm Spirit, uh, I don't know the specifics of it because I don't get to play a whole heck of a lot of Meepo in my day-to-day -day pubs. But um, I just sort of thinking about it, they've got a Root to be able to deal with the Storm. They've got Burrow Strike to be able to deal with the Storm. They've got Axe Coal That's to be able to deal with the Storm. All of these different things. And then if they manage to just get a Troll Warlord on top of them for a little bit... This is going to be a huge problem. Now, the flip side of this is that if somehow, some way, veggies are able to get off to a hot start, they are going to be able to dominate, I think, because they have these heroes that are just built upon, you know, continuing the snowball. You've got a Ventral Spirit and a Core Roll, uh, Dazzle there to help out the Storm Spirit. You've got, you know, a, a Centaur Warren who can the start making things happen. And, and Meepo is not a hero that wants to play from behind. He wants to be ahead <laughs> continuously throughout the whole game. And if that fails to happen early on, could be a tough one. But the aggro tri lane going to start it off. Blitz looks to be starting in the jungle to give everybody that nice little aura. Should be able to get level 2 by about a minute and 30 seconds, roughly, I would imagine. And we'll be heading off. Now the question is, can they find this first kill? Uh, if they could do it, it'd be pretty great. But I think that they did spot them out. Uh, with the ward. I'm not sure about that one, but Merlini's playing it pretty safe so far. Actually, not quite able to get that. The other thing is that, like, if Blitz, uh, or not Blitz, <laughs> CCNC is able to have himself a good old time here, you, you think about the way that this might end up working out. Is Merlini very low? Is he going to die? He does end up going down. So they found the Burrow Strike, and they took Shadow Wave first, so they're not going to do it. But if, if they do end up starting to sort of snowball a little bit with the Storm Spirit, um, there's not a whole lot that you can do to stop that. And he is consistently outlaned Freed in the mid lane. So that's something to consider as well. Just going to try and do his best against him. Uh, Centaur, kind of, I would say, mediocre against the, uh, against the Meepo. Oh, wow. If they could find something here, this would be big. But yeah, basically, CCNC is going to always have to be careful in this game. Because there's so many different ways to lock him down. Up here top again. Trying to get a bit aggressive. With the Sand King rotating mid. They should realize that this is happening. But CCNC already using up a lot of mana. I need to take myself offline again. Courier coming out as well. Does look like it's going to be able to go back without any great worry. But now they've caught him. Who could be coming shortly? Are they going to be able to get that kill first? Blood, having already spilled in the top lane, <laughs> uh, is not going to be spilled there. But they do find the kill on the Storm Spirit. So, nicely done there. And just making sure that the stream is looking good does look to be the case. Again, hope that you guys have been enjoying the coverage. Just a little bit of plug for what the rest of this is that we're going to be doing as the rotation comes in from Blitz towards the axe. He's going to get the pull off. This does put him in a bit of a scary spot, although there's a lot of creeps around. Maybe with a Frostbite they can find a kill. As CCNC actually ends up being able to kill off the Meepo. Double Edge as well. There's the Frostbite. Dodges away from the damage coming in. Cap needs to be able to live through this. They have another Frostbite in three seconds. Almost enough mana to use it as well. He does have a TP, but not enough mana. The chase, is it there? Can he find him? They have another double edge in a second. There's the frostbite. There's the kill. Dies to the creeps. Oh, it hurts. Needed to be able to dodge that aggro. But yeah, CCNC being able to find the kill in the mid game. Nicely done. 
mid lane, excuse me. So, it's sort of working out here at the start. The big problem is Merlini just going 2-1 and one at the beginning of this game. Not an easy one by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, no, and CC and C. He does have another remnant trying to find it. Can he get out of there? He does not. No points in Geostrike as of yet, but maybe Blitz can find him as the rotation comes. Ah, it looks like they're aware of what could be happening. Yeah, and he's just going to send that Meepo back. But again, possibly with the Frostbite and Storm Spirit walking in, they could do it. The pings come out. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. CNC stepping up. The right click is there. Trying to get him. Oh, no! They didn't come in time. Ah, that would have been big. Not able to do it, though. Cap now with the rotation. They want to give Merlini a little bit of an easier lane. They're going to send him down against the Axe. Granted, it's not a hell of a lot easier because he can still just keep on spamming out the wave and... Yeah, that's a rough one. So already, Wheel Wreck while whistling, feeling very good right now about their chances. But as I was saying, keep in mind that this is just the NA stream that we're doing right now. After this one, we're going to stay on this channel and continue the coverage of the open qualifiers, heading over to the Chinese servers to see what's going on over there. Already, Vici Gaming have moved on and been able to be the first team to qualify through China. And then afterwards, a little bit later on in the evening, we'll have Zyklops come in to continue the Southeast Asian coverage. So a lot more Dota 2 to come. This is going to be a continuous 24-hour stream. If there is ever a point in time where you're wondering, what is there for Dota? Where, where's the Dota to watch? Oh god, CC and C, no. Tower damage, the Burrow Strike, they get the kill! Oh god, it hurts really bad. But yeah, if you're ever wondering, where are we going to watch some Dota? Where are we going to go tune in for it? Just be sure to hop back into twitch.tv slash beyond the summit because for the next week, roughly, it's just going to be all Dota all the time. But yeah, Zyklops taking over for me at midnight Pacific time. And then at, I believe, 8 in the morning is when we're going to have Breaky come back in for the rest of EU. Um which we're going to start the second day of open, so more fun. We had Rhyme mention that he might be playing through the opens as well. All right, they just used the poof, and on top of them, there's going to be the magic missile trying to find that kill. Jump forward again, able to get it, is going to find that one. So Meepo not snowballing to the normal extent that you would expect, but he does have that first per, uh, piece of the Dragon Lance up now. Regenerate. Stampede away. Does not want to get caught. They're moving in now, though. CC and C with the regen rune, keeping it up and alive. Derp, derp. Going to be the one that they spot out now. Can they find him? Can they get him? The chase is going to continue. They're going to dive through it now. Remnant is already there. That does uh, take off the regen rune, so still going to fall. Merlini ends up picking up that kill. Much needed for him as well to catch back up in this game. They need the Venge to get to a decent start. And any kills like that is going to help tremendously. Vanguard Axe as well. Not necessarily what you would have expected. And now the swap back. 2017 taking a good bit of this. This look like he's eventually going to drop. They find the kill. Nobody actually ends up getting it, but they give it to the tower. So still fighting their way back into this one. In spite of the heavy net worth advantage we're going to be seeing, almost 2,000 at seven minutes, it's, it's, a, it's a game where you've lost your Meepo three times. So they put a good emphasis on shutting him down to the best of their abilities, and they can keep doing it with the Storm Spirit and bringing in one or two. The big question is just going to be, like, how much is Troll going to get out of this? He's definitely been the beneficiary. Already phase boots now, building back for the Held and the Dominator. So, we'll have to keep our eyes on this. It does look like the Centaur is going to be going back for the Cloak, at least. Remains to see if he's going to think that going for the full... Uh, hood is the proper answer. 
The Axe going for the Vanguard too, it signals that they're more comfortable sort of hitting a slightly later timing. But if you think about how strong this timing is going to be, like this is a farming item, so he's going to have Blink and Vanguard around the time when Meepo has all their big stuff up. And, well, Layla, they wanted to find that kill, but weren't able to get it. Now KVH in some trouble. Merlini says, see you later. I'm not going to help you out, Franz. TP, is he going to get it? The Earthbind not breaking that this time. And Bro Strike also not quite in range there for Derp Derp. But yeah, this is probably the second Dragon Lance is going to be the time when Meepo really becomes a, a super obnoxious. I guess he could just go straight for the blink if he wanted, but I think that saving it for a bit later and just trying to go into more of that survivability is probably going to be the name of the game for him. And Storm is still sitting top of the net worth. As we see KVH take out Franz. Actually, we don't see it. Sorry about that one. There's behind tower doing it. Almost level 6 on Warlock, that adds a whole other dimension to the danger in this game. The counterplay against the initiation that you have. And in the meantime, only a thousand gold away from the Blink Dagger for the Axe. And Merlini's going back for the Aquila, realizes that he needs it, needs something like it. Still yet to see if Cap is going to complete the uh, hood or if he wants to try and get a Blink Dagger so they can make stuff happen. It definitely feels like they have to get something done. And it's a question of, like, can they do it without that Blink Dagger? And I'm not sure if they can. May maybe it's just by virtue of CCC getting bigger, and eventually they'll be able to then. And they've got a lot of different ways to enable him. You've got the CM for the... Uh, Mana. Oh, Derp Derp. Maybe it's some trouble here. It's going to end up getting Frost bitten. Right click's coming through. The chase is there. They get the kill. Level 6, not yet online. He's so close to it, this Warlock. The call, good bit of damage, trying to run away. They've been able to control wheel for the moment. Cap's still being contained. Earthbind is there. They get the hoof stomp. But it looks like they're going to be fine. All five heroes here. And if they try and chase this wheel, do not want to take this fight up the hill into the shrine. So the end of Tally B is, is a, a buyback for the Sand King as well. That is really not the play. Derp Derp getting a little bit exuberant with his movement, and this is going to delay his Blink Dagger quite significantly. That's an avenue for them to like get back into this game a little bit even. They, they have to make something happen, but... Yeah. We'll have to wait and see. CC and C just waits for that bloodstone before they really go for the big engagements, unless it's an extremely favorable one. But also, like, they're vulnerable at various points. You see down here the troll farming alone. If they've ended up bringing one or two back down, maybe they find a kill there. And likewise, Meepo is always going to be sort of spread out across the map. There's a chance. So, almost 12 minutes into it, you can see the net worth still around that 2,000 net worth lead. 1,500 over here to the side is, well, actually Storm Spirit goes down. That is huge, and KVH also not going to end up dying. They go for the Stampede, but this is Fatal Bonds on to two. They might just end up losing them here. They do bring down KVH, which is nice, but Blitz in trouble as well. Is going to end up falling here. Franz needs to run away. The Golem chasing him. The fact that Meepo ended up getting a kill there on the storm just hurts so bad. And that's the second Dragonlance done now. Medallion on CM. Not every day you see that. So definitely feeling rough for veggies right now. Mentioned it a couple of times. I think there's ways back into this game, but it comes off the back of killing the Meepo. And not sure how viable that is going to be. Mid lane. They're on top of Blitz yet again. Burrow Strike connects. And another kill. Oh, it hurts. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts. 
You hate to see that. But they gotta get something. Again, it's a big swing that comes back in with the kills. But they need to do it, like, right now. Because, you know, you've got Epicenter that's there, but no Warlock ulti. So if you're able to find the initiation, then it feels a lot better. But... I don't know, maybe it's too hard to fight even with Warlock ulti being down. He just wants CCNC to step forward again. He knows he can kill him. If he just catches him with the Earthbind, it's super easy. Mid lane, fight Bruin, they're on top of him. But they still can't get the kill. Like, this is the thing, is that they have to have, like, the... Oh, God, not up top again. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. And now, maybe going to take some more. Burrow Strike on a Franz, up there on the high ground. They're going to pull him back in. There's the Magic Missile. Maybe they can take him down. The Blitz Dota ulti doesn't actually end up doing all that much. Derp, derp. Burrow strikes to get away on to three. They take down another one. Oh, Meepo is here. Say it ain't so. That is really bad. Four dead. Trying to TP out, but gets bashed for good measure right as the shrine comes back up. Oh, God. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Even though two die, <laughs> that's the thing, it's crazy. It almost ends up being even because they're pretty far ahead at this point. Yo, derp derp on the Sand King. That was the play. He made it happen. Franz gets the weave down just in time to see them take the kill. There's a TP scroll on the ground. That's fine. D wards as well. Oh. Game is hard. Well, wheel, they are going to be right there on top of them. I think that they spotted that Blitz was over here as well. Does have his Blink Dagger there. Could look for the jump. We do also have the Meepo now into the Blink Dagger himself. So this is where, you know, those solo kills on the Storm are going to continue to happen. He can't farm across the map like anywhere. And it's going to be a little while before he can finish off that Bloodstone too. They got the Midas on the Warlock. Much like game number one, this one's feeling, or rather game number two, this is feeling very over. Sometimes you just get Meepo'd. In the meantime, they're going to try and pressure bottom. They know they can't fight right now. And yeah, Cap, I think making the correct choice here, he's going to go back for the Blink Dagger. Knows that he cannot wait long enough to just go straight in for the hood. And the unfortunate part now is that you have to defend high ground so close to Blink, but it's not quite there. And now they've caught him. If he ends up going down here, this would be tragic. The Burrow Strike, he ends up falling still so close. And the CM ulti immediately going to be taken out. They drop the Warlock ulti. They buy back on the Centaur. No way he's going to blink anytime soon, but they have to fight. They have to take something, but they get the counter initiation. The Axe doing every damn thing. The Burrow Strike is through as well. A ton of damage coming out. Almost able to kill him off, but immediately CCC forced to back away. Axe is dead, and Cap doesn't quite get the double edge off. That might have been what they needed to finish it off. Can they kill off this Meepo? He's really close to dead. He does end up falling, but it's just the Aegis. Now, can they get the counterplay? Derp Derp does have a Burrow Strike ready, trying to find this kill. Connects onto CCNC. There's the Earth Find. The Grave is there, but with the Chain Stun, he should still die. They get the Bash. Meepo goes down, but so too does CCNC. And Derp Derp, well, can't quite break that teleport. Wowzy, wowzy. I mean, they find a couple, but it comes at a big old cost. Merlini will run into Layla here. There's the magic missile. Okay. Uh, he went that way. All right, and they got him. So they clean up three. We'll have to check out the fight recap when it comes about. I'm sure it's not going to look pretty. I mean, again, like how good is this? You had to buy back on your centaur, who's really close to the blink dagger. Now he's, what, eight, 700 gold away from it? 
And you can see, like, there's no way that he doesn't buy back there. That's absolutely the correct call, but it just hurts so much. And now your buyback status, you don't have it on the CM, you don't have it on the Centaur, you don't have it on the Dazzle. Storm buyback being there is still really important. And if they can somehow manage to find, like, a couple... All right, this, this could be the kill. This is the turning point. If they can find this one, possibly, just possibly, they'll be able to make something happen. And Stampede. Yeah, he's gone. All right. Merlini is looking for more there. Swaps back in. Derp, derp. Invis. Burrow Strike. That's one. Yeah, and they have to call it off now. But that does ensure a Bloodstone if he wants to go and pick it up, which I'm pretty sure CC and C is going to. So disassemble Arcanes. Go by Bloodstone. <laughs> it's, it's like the restart button. We get 12 charges no matter how bad it went earlier. Granted, he has a Bloodstone and, you know, a Null Tally. But it's something. It's something, something, something. Oh, it's a hard life. And going back to the sheep stick now, if Meepo gets this before, I don't know, what's what's going to need to be the item? Like Lincoln's probably for Storm? Maybe the play is you just have to plan on not getting killed and then go for, like, Orchid. I think that's probably the best play because if he, like... Under Even Blink Earthbind is probably quick enough to catch you because there's a little bit of that animation time where you go for the zip. And if you're facing the wrong way too, like all of those things can come into play and you just have to constantly be playing it so safe. So I think the better play instead is just to like cross your fingers at this point, hope you don't get killed, and then you go for Orchid and pick off game. Because if you try and play like a defensive item at this point, you're just not going to end up doing much, I don't think. You need to have solo kill potential. And right now, he has solo kill potential against, I think, no one. I think literally no one. Maybe Warlock. But Warlock, if he has golems, like it's maybe even worth it to drop it there because the rest of his team could possibly show up in time. So... Yeah, it's a tough one. This will come in handy. And see him as a solar crest. Like, there's elements of this that don't feel terrible. Oh, look at this. Look at this movement right now. Do they have any idea? Storm is up there, front and center. They've got everything for him. They don't have the Meepo, though. Meepo is not here. And right now, looks like Veggies do not have a clue that they're all in the area. Five on five engagement doesn't sound good. Meepo, he does have a TP so we can get back in. Yeah, I think Veggies, realizing what was going on there, are going to back out. It's, like, it's just too scary. You lose a game at this, or you lose a fight at this point, and Meepo will be able to pressure your top tier threes. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And even if he doesn't, like, he can still do this, honestly. Uh, okay. Derp Derp's gonna drop. Bloodstone charges. We're doing it. We're on this one. Wait, did he burrow? Alright, no, they didn't end up canceling ATPs there. So yeah, it's still fine. Radiant structures I was wondering if maybe they were TPing out and that's how it happened. Radiant Capitalist is moving in. Ah, but they're already gone. Ah, that, that hurts. You would have loved to get that one back. So 21 to 16. Wheel. Still very much in control of this game, but there are elements, there are pieces, there are bits and bobs that can possibly make this game turn back around into their favor. It's going to need to come off the back of some sick plays, though. You have Shadow Blade on Vengeful Spirit. I think it's a pretty decent cho uh, choice at this point. Like, they need to stop the split pushing that the Meepo can do. And they need to just get lucky. Like there's, there's, it's it's hard to come back from a ten thousand net worth lead with the heroes that they have. Like Centaur is going to need to make some absurd plays. So is the Storm Spirit. Looks like they're still going to be able to farm. Meepo looking for the initiation. Realizes Storm is going to back. Not going to find it. Merlini shows up. Going to Shadow Blade in. This could look. This this looks like it could be good. All right, they're going to stick around for another wave here. I'd think. Now, maybe not. Now they back. All right, good decision. 
and the poof out right as they head down. And you look over here also, like Layla has continued to play this just about as well as you can. He's constantly in a good position as this Warlock where he's not getting found out. You look at it, he only has one death. And this is the guy that they would want to be going on every time if possible. Take him down at the start of the fight. But he's been able to get that ulti off continuously. Radiant Another smoke play now. Is under attack. The smoke is going from wheel as well. Axe. It's not going to get spotted. All right, there's a lot of Meepos over here. They call it out. CCNC thinking that the Meepo could be up in the top side. And if they find him here, this would be huge. Ah, it looks like they're not going to quite know, though. Maybe head back over here. They're all grouped up. Uh, the smoke about to wear off for one. Doesn't look like they're going to find him. They ping out where he's at now. Storm could just zip to it now. And it looks like they're going to. They just pull him back in. There's the jump on top of him. Earthbind already there. Veggies, they need to get the swap out. They need to keep him alive, CCNC. They do find that kill. Absolutely huge play. A ton get in on that gold as well. That is everybody, a 14,000, 1,400, excuse me, net worth swing and 2,200 experience. Centaur might be in trouble now, though. You get one moment of feeling good, and then suddenly you got to back out again because you might end up dying. Yeah, they're all around him here. Turf Turf could just show up at any point. They're bringing in the CM as well. Warlock ulti is there. The TP on top of him. They realize what's happening. Chase now. Oh, they get a sick call. Oh, no. It's right on top of him. A good grave, though. And now that's Epicenter down, but he's out of mana. In trouble. The crush. Is it going to be enough? They drop the Warlock ulti. The Fatal Bond's onto all of them as well. Burrow Strike onto two. Get the shrine, please. But it doesn't look like it's quite going to matter. Well, that's a pretty good CM ulti. Almost able to take down KBH. They do find that kill. The counterplay. Oh, is the bait going to be real enough? They do manage to find a kill on the axe, but not before they take down one blitz. Dota barely able to survive from that one. Whoo, baby. All right. We've still got a bit of a game. The game is, it's, it's looking like maybe there's a chance. There's possibly a chance. It's nine bloodstone charges for CCNT. If he somehow could have survived through that, it would have been great. But not quite the case as of yet. And now you have Meepo... With lifesteal, evasion, oh, not, not quite evasion. He didn't end up going for that. He went for the attack speed instead, which is still great for all these Meepos. And not to mention the fact that you've almost got that cheap stick online, only about 150 gold away. That's another one of those items that just completely changes the complexion of this game. What I'm really waiting for is the Ag Storm. That's going to be the dream. I can't believe that he stuck around through all this. What are you doing here? <laughs> you need to go back to base. Go heal up. Oh, man, my heart be still. This is this has been a, quite a match. Oh, they dusted. Yeah, all right. Stampede, nice little move. Run away, run away, run away. Does have Silver Edge still. Dust is almost gone. Goes for the Silver Edge, and he's out. Radiant's Maybe a counterplay. Right click, uses the break. Jump forward. No spins for you, mister. There's the double edge. They find the kill. Again working out, and this Veggies team is happening. They're going into the Roche. They realize what's going on. If they could find the kill on Amipo here, this would be so huge. They jump in. They get the hoof stomp, the double edge as well. They're going to get Roche also. A huge play. Merlini picks it up. Can they take it in time? I think that they're going to be able to. Holy shit, Veggies. Making it work. They're doing it. <laughs> The game of Dota 2 is being played. CM has an Aghanim Scepter. Everybody keep in mind, this is not the Ags of old where you just get the damage increase. If you stand in this for 2.5 seconds, you get rooted. All right, baby. Things might be happening. You look at the net worth swing, and Meepo not a hero that wants to fall behind in any form or fashion. 44 seconds away. What can they get done in that time? The Tier 2 tower got pinged out for a second, but it looks like they're going to try and get their eyes towards the Tier 1. They need to get this Creep Wave over here as well, though. Veggies are doing it. A level 3 CM ulti with Aghanims. Yes, please. And hey, you know what? 
I I I want them to succeed here. This this would be uh <laughs> getting invited to the major afterwards if they're not there. <laughs> <laughs> so twenty four to twenty two, Merlini found another. Can they make something happen off the back of it? Derp Derp is there, but Storm not really in the range. Go veggies, go. All right. Where are we at? We've got about halfway to Agnum Scepter. KVH, BKB there, Helm of the Dominator. The big problem, of course, with the CM ulti is that, well, what? They don't have a ton of ways to, uh, they got a couple different ways to break it. He's halfway to his blink dagger. CM is so freaking farmed right now. This is absurd. All right, Yasha, Silver Edge. You're building back up the Bloodstone charges. He is going back for the Orchid now. He went for the uh, Lotus Orb. So I think that that's also a pretty good middle ground. Like, y you need some form of survivability. It gives you the armor against the troll. You also can take off the Earthbind in the midst of a fight, so you're not going to necessarily die, as long as you're not completely disabled. All right, Derp Derp, he's in position. If they can find... Oh, they know where he's at, though. They do it right away at the start. Is he going to be able to get out of here? He's stunned up, going to be pulled back in. They find the kill. Good scan. All right, they take that one down as well. So Tier 2 Towers down in the mid as well as in the bottom. They're getting set up to go towards the top as well if they wanted to. This game has been blowed wide open. And off the back of that, those couple of team fights. I guess the thing that I'm, I'm looking at here is like, yeah, again, for anybody that missed it, they did scan right there, knowing that they would probably be in that area. The Sand King could be. So Cap only about 1,300 gold away from it now. Getting a couple of these lucky runes. And an invis here would be pretty huge, although they have the gem on Warlock. That being said, if they can kill him before he gets anything off, that changes the game completely. God, I really hope he goes eggs. Come on, do it, CCNC. It's what everybody wants. All right, Force, Blink, BKB going to be up there. Man, what a good game. Avenge, top of the net worth. Like, that's the thing that's crazy to me about this. Merlini has been able to maintain an incredible high level of farm in spite of the fact that he's a vengeful spirit, right? Like, this is not a hero that farms well. Sure, you can go around with Helm of the Dominator and, you know, push out lanes with your creep, things like that. You've got Wave of Terror, so you can hit maybe a little bit harder, but honestly, it's, it's not great, and they're still making it work. Uh, I think CC and C is ready to jump on somebody if they show here. Yeah, it might be a little bit too tough, though. Yeah, and you can see Troll giving that respect, not wanting to get caught. Storm Spirit in the mid lane. If Meepo could get on top of him, this is a sheep stick. Meepo, they walk up to the high ground, needs to jump out and away. CC and C, this is not where you want to be. He's going to get graved. It's going to burn through the Aegis immediately. The dunk comes out. They have Lotus Orb. They are trying to use it. Four staff away. Really nice play there. Oh, man. Franz saving the day. That would have been awful. And it looks like they are going to lose the Dazzle, though. So the Stolen Age is down. Was that a buyback from the Centaur as well, unless I'm mistaken? No, it wasn't a buyback. They just ended up losing the Storm. So that's actually okay, because they are getting really close to the Stampede. And now Derp Derp actually going to be left alone here. The rest of the heroes are not in the area. Warlock ulti is down. This is actually a timing where they can make something happen. With Epicenter down, with Warlock ulti down, and Veggies by and large have been good at recognizing these moments and pressuring them to the best of their abilities. You can see this movement now down here towards the bottom. They've got a catapult. Maybe still a little bit afraid. God, it's just so hard. Because you're, you're also getting really close to having another item now for CC and C. It's basically got it. They're setting up on a KVH. This is maybe the play. 
All right, Merlini finds him. Right click and a magic missile. They connect there, pull him back in. Another one goes their way. And as we get ever closer, that magic missile piercing spell immunity, one of those spells that not a ton of people really think about all that often, but does make a big difference. And Meepo 2 is a hero that you still have some room to grow here, certainly. He's actually going to be going for Scotty. Uh, that, that item always freaks me out on Meepo. I'm not sure if it's great or not. But you look at the way it's going to go, and he eventually does sort of peek off at a certain point. And with, with Storm Spirit above him already, and having your eventual spirit above him in terms of net worth, and the sea, <laughs> I just can't believe how farmed Blitz is. All he was doing was farming this entire game. He's got the Blink Dagger. He's got the Solar Crest, Aghanim Scepter. He's going back for the BKB now. And when that happens, the only two things that are going to be able to break it are going to be the Axe the Call and the Warlock Ulti. You don't want to have to use the Warlock Ulti to break the CM Ulti. That's for sure. The other neat little thing, he can eventually go back for the Frostbite duration increase as well to increase the amount that all of these heroes will be rooted. So, next Roshan, sure to be a point of contention for both of these teams. Actually, I'm curious if you wanted to go for the Vengeance Aura instead. Oh my god. This game. It's getting me some, some heart palpitations here. Eventual spirit walking through. They should realize that this is an illusion. And I'm assuming not go on it. Alright, they're sick. Uh, okay, they have TPs all over, but they're about to push... And maybe they don't want to go for it yet. They're instead going to look for the fight. They feel confident taking this fight now. With the Ags up on Centaur, all of that damage reduction, this could be huge. They realize where they are. Sand King is there to break the smoke, as is going to be the Axe. Do they find him, though? Do they see him? Do they run into him? Cap, the smoke breaks. He looks forward. Ah, a little bit off the mark now. Wheel there. They... Aren't going to be able to get him to jump back the other direction. Now chasing after him, and they are going to be able to find him. A huge play again. Oh, the Warlock ulti breaks it, though. The CM ulti doing a good bit. Is it going to be enough? It looks like it is. They take down the Meepo. Nobody dead as of yet. They do end up losing that CM. They need to get out of here as quick as can be. CC and C trying to escape. No, he ends up falling, and now Cap also trying to TP out. They use their spells not quite perfectly, and they end up losing three. They take down the Meepo, but it comes at, again, a hell of a cost. So another great display here from Wheel Wreck while whistling. They bought back on the Axe, which is another big part of this and the reason they was able to turn. They have buyback on Storm. They have buyback on CM, but they do not have buyback on that Centaur. Although, God, they, they, Storm's going to be back up again. I don't know if they can actually pressure this. Stealing the catapult as well. Silver Edge out. See if they can find somebody. Troll Warler going back for the MKB now is going to make a pretty huge difference. KVH, you cannot stick around to farm this. Yeah, Merlini ends up taking over the purge creep here. And with Roshan back up, maybe, just maybe, there's a chance. Like, Meepo's not back up for 15 seconds. They have a lot of minus armor. It doesn't look like they want to test it, though. Maybe just a bit too scary. Where are we at in terms of levels? Meepo almost to that 25. I think that you take the 400 health here every day of the week. Looks like they are going to be going in for it now. Meepo is back up. Do we see... Radiant realized that this is happening. Merlini actually going to be caught out, but he does back out of there. The fight going to continue. KVH going to be caught. They pull him back in. Good amount of damage. Derp Derp looking for the counterplay now. They've been able to get on top of him, but that is going to be a sheep stick on the CCNC. He needs to get out of there. A huge call from Axe. They dunk through it. Doesn't end up mattering. Blitz ulti. Is it going to be enough? They do take down the Meepo with the CM ulti, and now Derp Derp going to fall as well. The buyback from CCNC. Now the chase going to continue. KVH, see you later as well. Maybe the Axe going to fall. This is a huge moment right now. If they can take him down, that's three dead. Roach is open. 
and they bought back on the S SK as well, and he's not going to be able to have that back up for a while. Oh, man. This is a tough one. God, CM, the, honestly, that ulti killing off the Meepo at the start of it, such a huge moment. And now they're not even going for Roche. They're going to force the buyback from two. And now you need to get the hell out of here. Time to run. Stampede is back up. They're not going to use it as of yet. They could still think about Roche with no axe for 56 minutes. Or 56 seconds. There is no axe for 56 minutes. This would be a very different game. But yeah, buyback only on the CM for the moment. Oh, God, it's so scary. I don't know if you can go for this. They need to back out, I think. But like, even without the axe, they have Warlock ulti. They have everything. Are they going to get there in time? They jump in. It's all so much damage. They Aegis is still on the ground. Go pick that up. Derp Derp going to be in trouble. Merlini is going to end up picking it up. They drop the Warlock ulti there after the Fatal Bonds. Trying to get out in a way. They don't have a way to actually break through the dunk, though. CC and Seeds out of there for the moment. Doing a good bit of damage. Blitz, no ulti for four seconds. He's so close, but they are going to be able to take it. Meepo dead for two minutes. KVH going to be controlled. A double for him. Off the back of the Aegis, they make it work somehow, some way. And Veggies, they lose three, but they win that fight pretty much. Oh, what are they going to be able to take with it, though? That's the problem. I, I think that they've got it. Merlini does so much damage, but the question is, can they hold with the axe? Like... Axe to, I don't think that they can do it. I, I think that they might have been able to at least get maybe a lane of Rax off of this because uh, Storm is going to be back up at a decent time. So it looks like instead they're going to play the safer route, go for the tier two first. Where do they go after that? Just look at the damage that Merlini does, though. He ended up going for the Vengeance damage. So he's dealing right now almost 400, a pop, over 400 damage a pop. They don't want to go for it. They don't want to press their luck. Oh my god. And now Blitz has his BKB. Oh, uh, the fifth most farmed hero in this game. Warlock had a Midas. He still has the Midas. He has a Midas refresher. It's still not enough. Net worth 10,000 into the favor of the Dire. 10,000 into the favor of the, uh, as well for experience. Like, Axe needs a BKB so bad. Stupid. All of these things. And not having him there for that fight again, it made so much difference because the Grave kept Merlini alive for so long. They couldn't shut down CC and C either. And then at the end of the day, they were piling in all this damage onto a Graved Aegis Merlini. Granted, in the middle of all of that chaos, you do not really have an opportunity to, you know, maybe spot out all the in intricacies of what's happening. He's going back for an MKB at this point. They did finish off the BKB on that axe as well. Buyback status at this point. You have it on the Warlock. You also have it on the Venge. And as this game goes on, they've got the pieces here. Franz has been playing a great game. Like, really has. Does also have that Lotus Orb to help out in these crisis times. When your CM is going to surpass the Meepo in the amount of farm you have, you know that the game has not gone as intended. How much extra damage is the Storm going to get from that Vengeance Aura as well? It's going to be pretty nuts. Actually goes back for the Deso instead of the MKB. Interesting. Not what I would have expected, but far be it for me to challenge Merlini in this game. And you can see Wheel Wreck while whistling, not feeling confident in this game. They are freaked out with good reason. I think both teams are sort of just like, all right, let's let's hang out. Let's wait until the next Roche fight. Because at the end of the day, you do have a good amount of sieging potential with Merlini. But if you lose uh, before the next buyback comes up, like for a couple of those other teams, like CCNC, he has this two-minute window. There's this long period of time. I guess it's not that long. It's going to be only like about 30 seconds. Invisibility. Buybacks are going to be up for CCNC for about like 30 seconds or so before the Meepos is. And if they can make something happen during that window... 
That that's like ideally the time to punish. Also before the um, troll has his, and honestly also for the sand king. So there's this really tight timing where they could try and make a big play happen. But the other problem is that it's also going to be a situation where you like, if you buy back on the storm at that point, what are you going to do? You don't have boots of travel. Maybe it is just waiting for BKBs. I don't know. A lot of decisions needing to be made. Meepo did end up trying to purchase that Scotty. He's still really far away from it. All of Veggies is grouped up by the Shrine here. As far as Vision is concerned, uh, Radiant do not have almost any. Meanwhile, Veggie's playing with a bit more. Although not tremendously so. They have this ward over here, which is kind of in an awkward spot. But they're able to outfarm them all across the map. So getting that next round of items, whatever it might end up being. You have the BKB on Storm now. Still only six Bloodstone charges, which is a, a scary thing. But when he farms into that next round... That ends up being pretty solid. I can't believe it. Blitz is about to get another item. Haste. That's so nuts. Oh my god. The other scary thing here is you do have the refresher ags for a refresher for warlock, so double warlock ulti. Double Fatal Bonds, why not? Yeah, sure. Boots of Travel, going to be on the ticket. Ben. Like, we haven't seen the Axe BKB yet in the fights. Meepo, I don't know if he's going to get that next item either. They're going to send the Illusions up to the high ground. This chip damage is not insignificant. Like, Venge, these illusions still do so much damage to this tower. Like, look at this thing fall. They need to be able to come back and deal with this, and with all the creeps in the area, it's just sort of not great to deal with. I do wonder if we end up seeing Venge go back for an Aghanims at any point. Maybe you take that as, like, I don't know. I'm not sure where exactly that would fit into the build. Because I think Shadowblade is still so good in this game considering what they're up against. You obviously don't want to get rid of your boots. Like, the idea would be is if you can get rid of your boots as you know you're going to die, but that's hard to sort of time out perfectly. He's going back for the Satanic instead. We've got a Yule Scepter eventually for the, um, the Dazzle. Arcane Rune up to the top here after CCNC pushes out this lane. We're 46 minutes into it. Stupendous. Veggie Esports, the little team that could, wanting to go all the way with this one. Still have the gem on Warlock. Smoked up for the moment is Veg. And they end up losing, or taking back over the Wolf. That should signal to Radiant that they're in the area. Yeah, and they'll, they'll know now. Looking for the swap as well. Wasn't able to find anything. Could Manta style again to try and send in the illusions. But maybe they just leave it alone for the moment. But yeah, more damage being dealt to these towers. Slowly whittling them away. Eventually it's going to come to a fight. Ah, able to jump out of that one. Warlock not going to get caught. Looks like Sand King won't either. Up on the high ground. Four staff down to the low ground. But again, you're, you have these three cores of heroes that just have so much net worth. Like, Blitz is so ridiculously farmed. And it's, it's like a serious damage dealer. He killed off the Meepo so quickly in that last one that I don't know if you can actually, like, you can't not touch him in the fight. So the, the main thing that you have to do is, like, wait for, he's going to, Blitz is going to have to wait to pop the BKB until after the call and the rock comes down. There is a refresher, so that makes it more difficult. Or, like, take those little scrappy engagements that we saw before. Looks like Bloodthorn is going to be the call for CCNC. They're still just completely out farming them all across the map. And this is, this, this is the point in the game where Storm Spirit is just 
like ridiculously hard to deal with. Granted, CCNC has gone for a lot of very aggressive items, which means that he doesn't have that like unkillability. Like you never are gonna go for a Lincoln's here. I mean, the BKB is probably gonna be a good amount, but if he gets caught by like you know either the Warlock ulti, if he gets caught by the Axe Call, um, and then you have Troll Warlord on top of you, that's where the game like you, you, there's just nothing that you can really do. So he still has to play really carefully. And he can't be, like, the first one into the fight. He has to be able to outplay them all. Eagle song now? <laughs> God. They've been doing a great job of this. And now in towards Roche. Do we see any response right now, though? It doesn't look like it's going to happen. They kill off the creep. They're going to be able to take this so quickly. They need to do it real quickly, though. They have to take it down before the rest of them get here. And it looks like Wheel, knowing that they need to come and contest, the creep spots them. Maybe, possibly, Capitalist is there. They don't want to pop the Stampede if they don't have to. The jump in onto the back line. Afrid is there as well. Cap's starting to drop low. He needs to get the ulti off. He's able to escape. They get the ulti off. And now the CM ulti going to town. It's going to take them all down. DD, excuse me, double kill for Blitz. They buy back on every damn person. Holy crap, that was some damage. Oh, that was gorgeous. They just barely managed, and again, it's Frauds. Look at the amount of damage that they did. It, actually, the Venge in all of that. 7,000, roughly. Now the Tier 3 down, looking to finish this one off. Ben Merlini Wu has potentially done it, as well as Mr. Blitz Lee. The swap in from far away, long range, Frostbite there, going to go to town. They do drop that Warlock ulti. Have they gone too far? No, I don't think so. They are going to GG out because at the end of the day, Veggie's Esports Club are not going to be in the qualifiers. They are going to concede. It had to happen. It had to happen. So, my dishonor too great. <laughs> terp, terp. That's really sad. So again, for anybody that's wondering what happened there, they were going to play until it looked like they were going to win and then they were going to be out. So Veggie Esports Club, um, they earned the spot at the major, but they're going to give it away to uh, Wheel. I can't even remember the name at this point. So that's what ends up happening at the end. Uh, I, I, I think that it's probably for the best. They, they have to cast the qualifiers, the casters. They know that it's not going to end up, uh, they know it's not going to end up being them getting out of the regionals. So, it still put on a good show. That was great. That was great. Um, yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed the broadcast again. We're probably going to take a short little break, but they freaking did it, guys. They did it. They did it. Never say it ain't so. That's such a freaking cool story. I mean, it sucks that they had to end up doing it and, you know, gg out at the end. I would have loved to see them play against some of the other teams from NA, but you can understand why it happened. <sighs> Maybe next time. Maybe next time. So I hope you guys enjoyed the broadcast again. There is still more to come. NA is sewn up for today in the first qualifiers. Complexity, as well as wheel wreck while whistling, are you going to be your two qualifying teams from the Opens in the first round. Uh, meanwhile, we had a couple others that went through earlier on. Uh, Warriors Game in Unity now changed to Team Bazaar, which sounds, sounds like Timbersaw. Team Bazaar. Uh, I guess you have to put like a little bit of an accent or an inflection on it for that to work. And then I don't actually remember who it was for EU. Oh, lordy. I'm going to look like a noob. It was Proto to Gaming, who ended up moving on from the EU qualifiers number one. Also, from China, we had uh, Vici Gaming from the CIS region. Double Dimension, that happened a little bit earlier on. And then South America, we had a number of them that are still moving on and still playing it out. Uh, Union Gaming is actually playing Union Gaming BO, so I don't know how that one's going to end up working out. Uh, Voltor Gaming has already moved on, and there's still a couple more to look for as well. Um, but yeah, it should be some more great stuff. We're going to be moving into China next, which will be happening shortly. The China Brackets number two, uh, and that's going to be going until about midnight. So another three hours roughly where I'm going to be sitting here talking to myself. And then we are going to be moving on afterwards to Southeast Asia, where Zyklops is going to be taking over. So, 
yeah, I hope that you guys again uh, enjoyed the, uh, the 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 game. Um, Veggie Esports Club, what legends? So I hope that you guys enjoyed. We'll be back in a little bit. See y'all in a bit.